I'm AC Brown, and you're listening to Is My Aura On Straight, a podcast designed to help you start living from your core instead of your conditioning. Each week, we'll discuss topics ranging from human design, astrology, metaphysics, spiritual self-development, and everything in between. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Is My Aura On Straight. I am your host, A.C. Brown. I am your spiritual doula, intuitive strategist, psychic channel, and human design expert. And I'm also an entrepreneur. And I want to thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Is My Aura On Straight. Now, today's episode is talking about are you maximizing your season? Um, I did this, um, a little brief version of this on the Sunday sessions. Those of you who didn't catch it, I wanted to bring it here to the podcast, of course, because I thought it was great information and I always want to share on multiple platforms, especially when I get a lot of feedback about a particular subject. So let's get into today's episode. So are you maximizing your season? Um, what is a season? Um, a season, as you know, can be winter, spring, summer, or fall, um, or it's an indefinite or unspecified period of time, meaning it could be a while. <laughs> it could be a long time. It could be a little bit of time. It could be a long time. But um, the reason why I wanted to talk about that, because I've if you guys have heard me um, before, whether on the Sunday sessions or just on Instagram or even here on the podcast, just talking about that I am in a season of growth. Um, and I'm going to be talking about what I consider the five seasons um, that you go through um, in your adult life. <laughs> and um, I've experienced all of them. And I think that the fifth um, season, the final, the final stage to your transformation and evolution is growth. Um, I'm, I'm at the fifth level. <laughs> um, if we were playing a video game, I am at the last level. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. And I'm going to be expanding on these topics um, in another platform. Not going to talk about that yet. Um, but it's going to be really good. It's going to be a bunch of downloaded stuff um, that I've been downloading and I'm um, just getting messages from spirit and it's been really great in helping people behind the scenes. So like I said, I'm in a I'm in the growth period. I'm at the final level. I'm, if I'm playing a video game, I'm at the final stage, guys. Um, and um, the reason why I wanted to talk about are you maximizing your season is because lately, because I have been growing um, and I have been doing the work. And, you know, you hear me talk about that a lot. Doing the work. What does that mean? Um, and. I recently had talked about that the type of growth work that I'm doing, the type of work that I'm doing, I probably would have rather someone break up with me. It would have probably been way easier to have a heartbreak um, or what I call the root, call the love season, have a love season than to be dealing with the growth because in this growth season, you are forced to, if now, here here's the caveat. If you are really doing the work, you are forcing yourself to look at yourself in the mirror and face your truths, what is actually true, not the things that you've been telling yourself, not the things that you've been letting other people tell you, you have been actually doing the work and telling the truth. You've been looking at what is, not what could have been, not what you perceive, actually what is, what is, you know, what you're going through about yourself what you're going through about the way you react to people, how people react to you, um, how you're dealing with things, how you're facing your inner child stuff, how you are processing these issues that you've been holding on to, these stories that we've been telling ourselves. And because I'm at this point of growth where um, since I've been doing a lot of work, if I could tell you all of the things that I've been doing over this year, um, you'd be like, wow, you've been going through it. Um, but it doesn't show not because I'm hiding or not being transparent, but it is a very uncomfortable stage that I was going through and it's still uncomfortable and I'm learning how to be uncomfortable, which is another great thing, um, that I'm comfortable with being uncomfortable now, um, because things are ever changing. Things are evolving with me, with my career, um, with, 
the, my goals, with my dreams, with the expectations I have for myself, with the expectations I took, took off of myself, all of that. And because of that, I found myself in a place and in a space where I'm truly happy for other people. And what I mean by happy, I mean, I'm not fake happy, but truly happy. And when that means is we're going to talk about fake happy. So if you're driving your car, pause this, go get a pen and a piece of paper because we're going to we're going to give, you know, we're going to give a little lessons today, <laughs> give some lessons today. Um, so what I mean by I'm not fake happy, there was a time in my life, I would probably say like almost two years ago where I was saying, you know, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy for this person. They've you know, they found love or they got a new job or they're getting exposure or they're, you know, they're figuring out something else or they're doing this or doing that. But then I would always be like, but what about me? What about me? Like, why isn't it not happening for me? Um, why, you know, my my subconscious whiny voice would be like, well, why isn't that happening for me? Why do they get to find love? But, you know, she's, you know, she's this or she's that or he's this or he's that. And now he's in love or she's in love or this person got this new or they're doing this. And I was always bringing it back to myself on why I wasn't experiencing what they were experiencing. And so in this stage of growth that I'm at, I am truly happy for people. Um, when friends experience things, when acquaintances experience things, you know, my clients experience things, um, I am really like elated for them and it has nothing to do with me. It's literally a, wow, that's awesome. Like I'm so happy for them. Like I'm cheering them on. And there was a time when I was fake happy about stuff like that for people and, Fake happy is like I said, when you say, you know, oh, I'm so happy for you and such and such, but you're always questioning why not me. Um, you know, fake happy is when you are worried about the you in the midst of celebrating others. Um, and you, and when you, when you're doing that, when you are worried about you in the midst of celebrating other people, you are not maximizing your season. And I noticed that, um, about myself, and that was during this growth phase that I'm at, this final phase of growth. Um, I know that I'm a totally different person because I'm actually happy for someone. Um, and now other people may say, well, oh, well, I'm happy for this person. But are you really happy for them? Are you happy for them because you are seeing that, oh, wow, you know, look at that. They're doing their thing. They're out there being amazing. They're doing their own work. Or are you fake happy for them? Are you fake happy for someone? Are you, you know, finding out or f trying to figure out the, um, the equation to their, to their happiness? How come they were able to get a new car or find a new job or pay off all their debt or raise their credit score or find a husband or find a wife or take these trips or buy these things or, you know, all of this stuff. Are you trying to figure out their equation? Like, well, she was not going out every night. So I guess she was saving $20 a week or he wasn't doing this. So maybe he was doing that to get there. If you find yourself trying to figure out other people's equation to their happiness, you are not really happy for, uh, for, for someone else. Um, it's fake happy. You're be, you're fake happy. Um, and a lot of people are walking around being fake happy for people. And it's because you're not maximizing your season. And what I mean by maximizing your season is that we all um, get to these places in our life. And I, I consider there's five seasons. We have a love season. Um, we have an opportunity season. We have a rebuilding season. We have a heartache season and then we have a growth season. Now, usually the heartache season and the rebuilding season, those are the first two ones that you experience and they can come at certain times in your life. Sometimes they come multiple times. If your heartache season comes multiple times, you haven't learned the lesson. So we'll talk about the heartache season first. So the heartache season is where you've, you know, had that first love or that first um, encounter with a soulmate or, um, you know, maybe it's some type of karmic tie with someone and it's a very intense relationship. 
It is a very life-changing relationship. It is a relationship that changes you or makes you, you know, so elated and um, so just like, yay, love is great. Love is amazing. This, You know, it's usually that first kind of official relationship um, in your adult years. It could be in college. It could be after college. But then something happens and it doesn't work out. You guys don't, you know, keep it together. And then you go through what I call is a heartache season where you are extremely distraught, where you are extremely um, questioning everything, where maybe you've lost yourself in that relationship and you're trying to figure out who you are on your own or by yourself. And the heartache season is, is it can be a small season. Um, sometimes it can be a big season. Um, but what I've noticed in the work that I do in my observations People don't maximize that season. Um, they usually jump from relationship to relationship. They, um, it's nothing wrong with dating. Um, it's nothing wrong with, you know, getting back out there per se. But if you keep on repeating the same cycle um, of attracting the same w- women, attracting the same men, um, you have not really dealt with who you are and what you have, um, what you have, um, brought to the relationship or what you didn't do and you're playing the blame game and so I always tell you when people are in the heartache season that they can really get to know themselves and figure out what they want a lot of people don't take a step back and do that they just get back right out there and I'm not saying you need to be single for years or anything like that but a lot of times when people are in their heartache seasons they wind up chasing happiness outside of themselves instead of within And then that's how you wind up getting in the same situation and the same type of relationships. And that heartache season comes around again. Um, So the heartache season is something that you have to know when to take a step back and when to maximize. Now, a lot of people don't do that because love is a funny thing. Love is strange. Um, But if you are experiencing the same type of individual, you're dating the same type of person, just in a different body, you might want to take a step back and maximize that season what does maximizing the heartache season look like that means doing more self-work figuring out what really makes you happy um creating boundaries that you um don't you know fold on when a pretty face comes into your life or a really handsome guy comes into your life what does that look like for you? Start dating yourself. Start, start taking yourself out on love dates. Start taking yourself out to places where you want to go. Start raising your own expectations by giving that to yourself. That's some of the things that you can do in a heartache season. Some people may be laughing at this and be like, I ain't doing all of that. And that's fine. I guarantee you, you'll be in the same space you are in the next relationship. Trust me, because I've done that. <laughs> I haven't. I didn't maximize my heartache season, but... I learned how to, and because of that, I date differently now. Um, I have different expectations for myself. I'm I'm happy in my own life right now without anybody. So it's it's a very different perspective. The next season that you have would be the rebuilding season. Now the rebuilding season might feel now. Let me let me let me emphasize on that the rebuilding season might feel like the worst but the rebuilding season actually is pretty dope if you allow it to be now what is the rebuilding season the rebuilding season is where you experience a shock in your day-to-day life um you have a financial hardship um you lose a job you get laid off you get fired um it's an unexpected situation um You might get your car repossessed. You might get um, your, you know, house foreclosed on. You might get evicted. Um, You might, there's so many things that can happen with the rebuilding season, but the rebuilding season usually comes with some type of external validation that is happening to you. So you lose something that you might hold value to that in actuality 
might not necessarily be that valuable in the long run or in the grand scheme of things if you look at it now the rebuilding season like I said can be really the dopest season out of all of these if you allow it to be and the reason why is because the rebuilding season and it's my belief that it is the universe it's God sending its last wake-up call <laughs> it's sending it's sending its last warning like all right listen here um, this is the last time I need to tell you this. This is the last time you need to stop hanging around with people. This is the last time you need to stop being reckless with your money. This is the last time you need to stop sleeping on your gifts and, you know, doing whatever. And then it literally just says, bloop, um, let's redirect you. Now, like I said, you can acknowledge your rebuilding season or you can whine through your rebuilding season um, or it can be really amazing it can be really dope because I think that the rebuilding season is also a redirection it is the universe it is God's way of giving you your final wake-up call to redirect you towards something better now a lot of people don't maximize this season I see it every time it I, it's happened to me um I see it all the time um you don't maximize your rebuilding season as what happens is that you are so caught up with the thing that you lost that you don't take a step step back and sit for with yourself for a little bit now I'm not saying sit and do nothing but I'm saying to sit mentally to sit emotionally with yourself and say what does this mean what does this mean for my life? What should I be doing? How can I, um, you know, redirect myself from this? How can I um, change something the way, change something the way, change, change the way I do something? Excuse me. How can I change the way I do something? How can I now, you know, say if you lose your job, how can I find a job where I'm actually happy at, where I make enough money? Or say, you know, you have a financial hardship. How can I not put myself in this predicament? Um, but what normally happens in the rebuilding season, um, if you don't maximize it, is that you just want to attain what you lost. So you want to, you know, now I know that, you know, losing your home or losing your place to live. Yes, you want to attain that, that self-awareness, that self-knowledge, you know, that self um stability you want to get back on your feet absolutely however you have to look at those situations as where is God where's the universe trying to move me to where's spirit trying to move me to what around me was so toxic that I let myself um get this far in debt that I let myself you know get so far in debt or mismanage my money so badly that I faced eviction that I lost my car you know that I you know I lost my house um everyone doesn't acknowledge that first part they just say oh my gosh I'm getting evicted or oh my gosh um I am you know, losing something, I lost my car, all of this stuff, but they don't acknowledge the, you know, when I was 20, I, my car got repossessed. It was, it was kind of messed up the way it got repossessed, but, um, cause I only had three more payments left in my car. And, um, at the time I, you know, I, I did, but di I didn't do anything crazy with my money. Um, I was short on it. I wasn't making enough money. And my car got repossessed. And for me, that rebuilding season was about who were truly my friends. Um, because I needed to ask people for help and to get rides to work. And the people who I thought were going to help me, they did not. And surprisingly, people who I had just met, they offered so much. They offered so, they offered, I mean, they offered so much, so much. So at the time I was working, I was a manager at Rita's, if you're familiar with Rita's Italian Ice and my boss at the time, um, it was, um, a husband and wife, they own two Rita's, um, they're, they're phenomenal. Um, they were like the only, uh, well, one of the many few, um, african-american couples who owned Rita's at, at that time and she you know found out that i had got my car repossessed and i was only th i literally had three payments left and like i said i had that was my part-time job i was a manager at Rita's for the summer and then i worked full-time at a real estate um, um firm i was selling real estate at the time and um 
I needed a car to do um, open houses, to do all of this stuff. And when I lost my car, I asked certain people to help me and they didn't help me. Um, and that was a real eye opener. So that rebuilding season for me was for me to stop hanging around a certain about certain people, certain people. But I had to learn that and I acknowledge that. But but that's I've always been self-aware in that manner. And so during that rebuilding season, you know, since I had only owed a little bit amount on my car, my um, boss at the time she was just like, well, listen, I was going to give you a bonus anyway at the end of the summer. How much do you need to get your car back? And she gave me the money to get my car back. And I was so, like, grateful to her because I had never seen someone really act out of kindness because I'm a person I don't know how to ask for help. Um, and so when she did that, it opened my eyes. So that was a rebuilding season for me. Um, because I had lost something and one day I'll tell you the story of how I got the car and why that was it was it was a lot going it was a lot going on at that time but the car you know that I you know that I had it you know I was it got repossessed and you know I was in my 20s and that was like really hard for me because you know it was my car I was it was your freedom a car is a freedom you get to go places you get to do things and I needed that rebuilding season to find out who my friends were, to find out who I could trust and who, you know, I could count on in certain times. And so I was able to look at that rebuilding season for what it was. It was a wake up call. The universe was like, eh, eh, you need to get this, this together. You need to not be doing this. You need to not be doing that. And boom, that's what happened. Some people don't do that in their rebuilding season. They don't learn the lesson. Um, and you will notice that if you look at some of your friends or acquaintances or even family members, they are constantly going through these things of struggle, of hardship, um, because they're not learning the lessons in their rebuilding season. Um, so when you're in the rebuilding season, it's good for you to just take a step and look, take a step back and look around and say, what am I doing wrong? Why do I keep on ending up in this place? Why is this not working out? And then you can move on to that. So once you get through the rebuilding season, um, you know, there's, I, I will say then there's the growth season. The growth is not the growth. Growth is not the final. <laughs> it's not the final. It's the middle. It is the middle way where you're like, okay, I'm ready to grow. I am ready to do the work that I need to do. I would say there's, I would say, let, let me rephrase that. There's five levels to the growth. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> of growing and figuring it out. Um, because the growth season, like I said, is probably the most uncomfortable out of all of them. Um, and that is because, well, the opportunity season can be uncomfortable as well. Um, and so can the love season, but the growth season is the most uncomfortable just because it is you facing every single thing, um, that you've ever known and saying, you know what, I want to deal with this. Um, not, you're not wanting to let it go. You want to deal with what you're going through. You want to, you know, be with it. You want to deal with it. You want to then heal from it. And then you are ready to let it go. And so it's not just about, oh, let that go. Let that thing from the past go. We hear that a lot. Um, and especially in certain communities, um, certain cultural communities, oh, that was in the past. You know, you should be moved on from that. You can't move on from something that you haven't healed from, that you haven't dealt with, that you haven't sit, sat with and figured out why and processed your emotions. That's why the growth season is the hardest season because you literally have all of these stories, all of these things and experiences that you've been through that now you're telling yourself, all right, it's time for us to ass assess all this information but once we assess it, we're really, we're, you know, I'm, I can't, I can't bring that shame with me anymore. I can't bring the, bring those heartaches with me anymore. I can't bring that disappointment any, w you know, with me anymore. And your mind and your body is like, well, hold on girl. Like, hold on guy. We've been surviving with all of this. This is how we get up in the morning. This is how we, this is how we function. Like we, I don't think you all realize how much your pain, 
how much your um, stories, how much of the things that have happened to you are so a part of you that it's literally a part of your being. That is what you thrive and survive off of. We are literally walking around surviving off of the pain that we've been through. We've been surviving off of the stories that we've been told about ourselves from our family, from our communities, from, you know, the people who knew us 10 years ago. We are literally, you know, um, entering relationships with um, the way that somebody experienced us two relationships ago. We are literally an embodiment of a whole bunch of things that don't serve us in most cases. And we don't realize how much that travels with us how much that um is in our day-to-day experiences how much that you know you carry that with you to work you carry that with you with your friends oh please when you start growing and you start you don't start um um you you start um you know not being the same that you used to be and then you don't want to hang around with your friends because you're like wait a minute we're not on the same page. You don't understand me. We are different. But, you know, the person that you have always been has ex- been accepting of the the uh, the silent toxic toxicity of your friends, of your family, the slide comments, um the underlying mental anguish that you feel when you're around certain people, around certain family members. All of that comes to the light. When you start working on yourself, when you are in the growth season, and that is a scary place where you like, wow. And because then, you know, going through this growth season of you being with this stuff, when you deal with it and you're in that deal with it level and you're like, oh, wow, I tolerated this person hating on me or this person not believing in me or this person um not understanding me and it's not because I had to explain it they just didn't want it to be a part of their experience they were projecting on me and then you when you start dealing with those things you're like wow and then you start feeling a little bit bad about yourself in a way not in a bad way but just like wow I tolerated all of this and then you start second guessing yourself in the growth season of, well, am I, do I really need to let go of this? And then it's the next uncomfortable phase of who am I going to be without all of this stuff? Now that I'm healing from all of this, who am I going to be? Who is that new version? Because I don't know her. Now you have a figment. Um, you have, I mean, you have a, it's, 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 it's almost like a figment of your imagination because you know, you, everybody has this ideal for themselves. Everybody has this, I want to be this, this is what I want, this is how I want to be. But when you are actually on that way to getting there, that is uncomfortable, that is scary, because you don't know who that person is. You don't know who the, you know, the person who works out every day, who eats healthy consistently, who is not co- currently on, the, constantly on a diet, who is not um, dating the ser- same type of person who's not, you know, bartering all their services, who is budgeting, who's doing the things that they say that they want to do. You don't really know that person because you have been holding on to so many things from your past, from who you used to be, that when you are going towards that new person, it's almost like you're breaking up with yourself. It's two different versions of yourself and you're caught in the middle when you're in the growth season. And that's why I say the growth season is the hardest part is because the growth season, once you get through that season, then, you know, the love season comes or the opportunity season comes. But the growth season is the hardest part because you are literally at a tug of war with yourself. You are at a, you know, we have one end pulling you and saying, girl, no, let's be sad. Let's, you know, be happy for two days and then let's think about our past. And yeah, that's really you. Don't forget, you know, when you were six and, you know, and this person did this to you, that's really who you are. And then new person's like, no, it isn't like we a bad bitch. Like we over here killing it. We're doing our thing. We are living our best life. We are fulfilling our dreams. And then you're stuck in the middle. Like, damn, I want to, you know, I want to be the new person, but the old person might be right. Isn't that me? 
And then you're having to assess that. You're having to process that. That's why it's uncomfortable. That's why I said to you all on, um, you know, one of my Sunday sessions, I said, if you would have told me the growth season was going to be this uncomfortable, I would have rather just been through a heart, in a heartache season. I would have rather somebody break up with me. That would have been so much easier to just be crying and thinking about someone of why did they didn't want me and, you know, to be turning it away from me. But in this season, because I'm actually doing the work and it's not about like, oh, people are like, oh, were you crying? every? It's not even about that. It's not even about you crying every day. Yes, there's tears. Yes, there's fears. Yes, there's a lot of stuff. But it's really about you writing down, okay, this happened to me when I was 10 years old. So because of that incident, now I associate when I have this amount of money in my account that this might happen to me, something that I was when I was 10 years old or, you know, when I was in college, this my college sweetheart did this to me. And now when I'm in relationships with men, this is my expectation because I'm piggybacking off of that feeling or you know, when I was in school, this happened. It's, it can be, it, these are just, you know, random examples, but it can be anything for you that you're breaking down and you're finding the root cause. You're getting to the root of stuff in your growth season because you are literally going to be pulling up those weeds and throwing them away. It will not be able to grow anymore. It will not be able to blossom negatively in your psyche. And that is scary. And it's only scary because we have been programmed um, by society, by a lot of things, by our family, by our cultures to hold on to pain, to be warriors, to be, um, you know, to persevere. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very resilient. That is, I can give speeches and speeches about different things, ways and how I've had to be resilient. Um, yes, all of that and how I've had to be resilient. But we are um programmed to hold on to stuff to you know make things a part of us that don't serve us it's like we are a lot we're you know we want to you know that's why I say therapy is good because therapy tells you you know bring all your bags to therapy and then the therapist says okay you don't need that you don't need that you don't need that and then I'd like to say coaching you know what I do and what other people do they help you figure out how to use what's left but in some of our cultures and some of the way time the ways that we've been raised they're like well no you know well you don't have to take the whole heartache um you know, bag, or you don't have to take the whole abandonment bag, just take a little bit of it, just take a piece of it with you, just hold on to it, you know, you never know when you might need it, you might need to pull out that abandonment card, um, and it's like, okay, yeah, you're right, maybe I should, I should hold on to that abandonment, but we don't need it, we can make peace with it, we can heal from it, and then we can move on from it, and sometimes we just don't, and so that's what the growth season is about, um, and hopefully, the growth season can be a and a journey for you all if you are in that or if you are in the beginning stages of it i'm telling you right now it's not going to be it's not going to be sunshine and light every day it is going to be um a, a inner struggle between the new you and the old you you're going to be in a constant tug of war with two people who one person you know so familiar you know you know so deeply you know very deeply because that's the person who you've been traveling with and surviving with through life um that is you know all of your old stories all of your old baggage everything like you've been you've been really you, that's what helps you get up in the daytime. Now you have to, you know, the new person, you have to create the new version of yourself and be comfortable with that. And it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be very uncomfortable. And I say that to say all of, you know, in all of that growth season, if you are doing the growth work, um, don't do it alone. Um, if you can reach out to a coach or anything like that, try to find someone to help you. Or if you're not at a coaching level, Go to therapy because the growth season is very, it's very uncomfortable. Find a therapist, you know, based off a rec recommendation um, that you can um, trust, that you can unpack these things with because the growth season is a very challenging season.
So after you get through the growth season and when everything is healed and when you're ready to let things go, then you have love and opportunities or, um, you know, it could, or you might already be, I would, well, this is the thing. I, whoever, if you are married and you're going through a growth season, please email me because I want to know how you're dealing. How is that like? What is that like? Um, because being in partnership with someone and going through a growth season, I can't even imagine um, what that would be like. So if you would like to tell me your story anonymously or something, I would love to hear it. Um, but after the growth season, then you have your love seasons or your opportunity seasons. Now, your love season, I'm I'm not there, y'all. <laughs> but from what I see from my friends, that um, the growth season, I mean, the love season is amazing. It's because you are a new person. You have done all the work. You've gotten all the things done. And now you are like ready to experience love. Um, and that love can be with... Um, you know, your current partner or it can be with new people. Um, but it's just a different way that you show up in the world. It's a different light and you start, you know, experience better um, quality of people in your life um, because you start radiating love. Once you shed all this stuff in the growth season, you start, you know, radiating love and all of that. But then you have the opportunity season. I'm experiencing a little bit of that. It's like I'm experiencing a little of the um, little overlap of the opportunity and the, you know, growth season together, but the opportunity season is amazing. Um, and you know, just to say about the love season, when you're in the love season, enjoy it. Stop. Don't question it. I have clients and I have friends who quite don't question it. If it's right and you're in a better place, don't question it. That's all I can say about the love season. Just enjoy it because you know what red flags are. You know what your boundaries are. You know what you need to be doing. Just enjoy the love season. The opportunity season is can be scary, but the same. Enjoy that enjoy the blessings that are coming your way enjoy the way that spirit's showing up with your manifestations enjoy that um because the opportunity season is it's it just it feels like um and like I said I'm exper experiencing a little a little bit of that I'm not all the way there I don't believe um but it just feels like people are just starting to get it they're starting to get the re -educ they're re-educating themselves on the new you and it's like, oh, okay, you get it. You down what you down what I'm doing? Okay, yes, yes, and yes. So that's the opportunity season. The growth season is probably the biggest, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be talking about this and a couple other things that spirit leads me to um, in um, in you know a, a certain medium. I'm not gonna say what it is yet, but when I come when it comes to all of those seasons, make sure there's a certain tips that you need to do. Make sure you're maximizing them. So if you're in a rebuilding season and you want to save money, you want to fix your credit, you want to, you know, budget properly, do that, maximize that season. Um, but the key to any of these seasons, do not focus on when it's going to be over because you don't know. Just focus on that season. Um, how do you know you're in those seasons? You know, <laughs> you know, um, the universe has a weird way of, of, you know, giving you clue after clue, breadcrumb after breadcrumb. And so those are the five seasons that I consider five seasons, you know, the heartache season, the rebuilding season, the growth season, the love season, the opportunity season. And, um, like I said, the growth season, this has got a lot of levels to it. They all do, but, um, there's all there's always something good out of them. And that's a new version of yourself. So that's all I got to say about maximizing your season. So I hope that you all um, got something from this. Um, next podcast episodes will be, um, we're going to be talking about Jupiter. We're going to be talking about the 12th house. We're going to do be doing more Q and A on human design questions. We're going to be talking about, um, for the month of November, um, the G center that I'm going to be doing some really specific center stuff, G center, the self, um, the ego center doing some really sp specific center stuff. And then I have a series of interviews coming up 
with some amazing influencers, amazing people um, who are there starting to respond. Yes. Um, some are like, you know, they have book deals and all of that stuff. So it's kind of cool. Um, and I'll be interviewing people um, about, you know, not only just human design or how they relate to it and just asking them questions all based off of their aura types, but how, um, what this is my aura on straight mean to them when it comes to spirituality, um, when it comes to how spirituality has affected their life, their love, their career, um, some of their rituals, some of their practices, how they got into the work that they were doing, all of that stuff. So it's going to be great. I don't know when the series is going to be released um, because I'm doing, I'm going to be doing all the episodes in about a two month time frame. I can't say how many, many, how many episodes, but it's going to be a few episodes and then I'm going to release it as a series within the podcast. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really good. Um, but if you, um, want some aura affirmations, definitely, um, you know, go to the work with me section in my, um, in my, on my website or the link in my bio on Instagram. If you want to book a reading with me or sign up for coaching or get information about coaching, definitely, um, reach out to me and we can set up a discovery call and, um, I'll be happy to be a part of your journey. Invite me into your life. Um, but other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, have a great day filled with good vibes and great energy. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Is My Aura On Straight. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at AC Brown and also check out my website for products and services at www.acbrown.com. And until we meet again, make sure you have a great week filled with good vibes and good energy.